in a world turned upside down. Heaven and hell were never far apart. The rest is in God's hands. History may have turned out differently had this man continued on because the combination of Lee uh, and Jackson was indomitable. I mean, I think Gettysburg would not have happened and Washington would have been captured and possibly Abraham Lincoln would have had to surrender the North to the Southern states. We'd have a whole different world right now. Today on A Word on Westerns, we're going to continue our discussion on films that were made about the Civil War and also some of the films that were traditional Westerns that have elements of the Civil War. And to help us with this, we've got actor who's done some of your favorite films, some of mine, and his name is Bruce Boxleitner. Howdy, pal. How you doing, my friend? How I'm you doing? good. I'm good. So, what have you got? Well, I did a film, a very long film, a very big historical film back in 2001, right after, right during 9/11. It was a Civil War epic called Gods and Generals. It was the actually the prequel to Ted Turner's Gettysburg, and it starred Robert Duvall. Stephen Lang, Jeff Daniels, oh my gosh, I had a gigantic cast. Alex Hyde White. Alex Hyde White as General Burnside, one of the real embarrassments of the Union forces. <laughs> and, uh, and you made off with one of the wardrobe. You know, I had to buy my piece of God is in general wardrobe from Al Frisch, who was over there, who somehow stole it. Anyway, but um, anyway, that's aside from that. But anyway, it was a gigantic production as Ted Turner's want to do. What you mean? You are the first brigade. I have no greater duty than to my home. Ted was in this playing the same role he played in um, Gettysburg. He was related to Walter Patton. Not to be confused with General Patton or anything like that. But Walter Patton had uh, died at, uh, in Pickett's Charge. So he got to play him before he died. And then in Gettysburg, 12, how many years before that, when they shot that, um, he got to reenact his ancestor's death in Pickett's Charge. Well, I, I know in Gods <clears throat> and Generals, there was a different Robert E. Lee. In Gettysburg, it was Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, And yes. in this one, it was Robert Duvall. And every scene, every still that I saw with, with Duvall... You were standing next to him. Yes, I was, towering over him, <laughs> which, which historically was true. I played uh, Lieutenant General um, James Longstreet, who was his second corps commander. And uh, the other, uh, the, the crux of our story in Gods and Generals was centered around Stonewall Jackson, played marvelously by um, Stephen Lang. Working with Robert Duvall was quite an experience. Talk about a great Western um, actor. We all remember uh, Gus McRae from Lonesome Dove and, and uh, Lucky Ned Pepper from uh, the original True Grit. Um, Robert was, uh, is a force to reckon with. He is a force of nature. And um, I remember being on the set and it was just such tension. He's one of those actors that makes everyone else's skin crawl. Like, I'm gonna, I'm just <laughs> I'm terrible. I, everything I'm saying and doing is and he's going to call me on it any second. I'm sorry I used those words, but um, it, it's, it's that kind of desperation. You're going, I, I'm going to quit after this. I'm, because he's so brilliant. I, I likened it to um, uh, studying at the feet of the master. Um, just his, it, it just tension crackled. And um, a couple of times he let loose because he was known to have a temper. But... Um, and you never knew why or when, so it kept you on your uh, feet and everything. Every time I was on horseback with him, uh, I was always at his right side. I always, uh, and we'd always have to get crammed next to each other. You know, the wranglers will push you in tighter and tighter because the director wants a two shot or a three shot. And we're supposed to be up overlooking uh, Murray's Heights at the Battle of Fredericksburg where you're losing terribly. 
And uh, Duvall has these incredible uh, speeches. They kept going, we want them in tighter, pack them in tighter. So we're pushing in, my, my knees are killing me, I'm up against his spurs. Um, <laughs> but I always remember to sort of take my foot out of my right stirrup, just in case something hits the fan. And I gotta bail off this horse faster than anything. <laughs> I'm going over the other side, okay? I'm just gonna go to the ground, that's it or be dragged to death when that horse is, <laughs> takes off. Because um, Robert Duvall was uh, this marvelous volcano of an actor. But no, go on, no, I, mean, he's, he's, I got off on that. No, but, um, no that's all right, people um, want to know. He's known for that, though. He's known for bringing But his tension. authenticity is, and concentration is mm -hmm. so incredible uh, that only another actor can really appreciate it. In a world turned upside down, heaven and hell, we're never far apart. The rest is in God's hands. Now, did he, you hang with him after? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, I want to just say something about gods and generals. And it, it got a poor reception. Warner Brothers' initial uh, cut of it was cut down because this thing was like four and a half hours. Obviously, we can't have that in a movie theater. I would highly recommend going to get the, the Blu-ray director's cut. The film makes sense in that. Um, Stephen Lang is fantastic. Like I said, all of us are in that, but it's, it really focuses on Stonewall Jackson, who was probably the greatest general the South had. And he was killed by friendly fire in the Battle of uh, Chancellorsville. History may have read different, differently, may have turned out differently had this man continued on, because the combination of Lee uh, and Jackson was indomitable. I mean, I think... Gettysburg would not have happened, and Washington would have been captured, and possibly Abraham Lincoln would have had to surrender the North to the Southern states. We'd have a whole different world right now. But that's how crucial certain personalities were in history. We had, uh, at any given time, 7,000 reenactors, wow. plus some CGI, to, because these armies were 20, 30, 40,000 men out on a field. So, but you take that 7,000 and then make them look like twice more, two or three times more, you know. It was quite a canvas. So uh, we shot the Battle of Fredericksburg. There were several gigantic set pieces. Ironically, the Battle of Bull Run was being shot the morning of September 11th. I was not there. I was about to be coming there, but uh, suddenly no one could fly anymore. But the significance of working in this gigantic Civil War film when our country was under attack for real that morning. Uh, Ron Maxwell, the wonderful director and writer of the film, shut down the set. Several, a lot of the c c crew was from New York State and uh, the environs of uh, Virginia there. You know, that was flight time of five minutes by jet airliner. Anybody who lived in Maryland, Virginia, um, you know, and, and further north, this was very real to them. We're shooting the most seminal event up until that time, the Civil War, that happened in American history. And then this history, living history, was happening. The tragedy of that. Ron shut down the set. He said, everyone go home. Go home and be with your families. And uh, Stephen Lang, who played Stonewall Jackson, his home was in White Plains, New York. He drove 10 hours to get home because travel was not easy at that time from where we were. We were way down in Staunton, Virginia. And he drove the Eastern Seaboard to get home because his neighborhood was, um, uh, he'd lived in a suburban neighborhood and a lot of his neighbors never came home that day because a lot of them commuted to uh, the south part of, of Manhattan there, lower Manhattan, and worked at the trade centers. So I think he lost something like 10. I'm not sure of the exact number. It was something like the 10 neighbors that never came home that day. Anyway, it just struck me that these events and the events that we were recreating, um, it was striking, you know? The Civil War, up until 9-11, the day of 9-11, it was the Battle of Antietam, with General Burnside. The casualties, that was the other bloodiest day there were only two bloodiest days on the North American continent. One day at Man Antietam and 9-11. So it was kind of a, that synchronicity of, of history and of real 
and real. You know what I'm saying? So many I'm looking characters. at Shenandoah here, a marvelous movie made by our good friend um, Andy Andrew McLaughlin, who I worked with. was, I think, his best film. Uh, yes. And, and Stuart Jimmy was Stewart. Wonderful, one of the top grossing films of that year. Mm -hmm. uh, John Wayne in Dark Command about uh, yep. Quantrill's Raiders uh, back in the 30s. Bill Below, uh, Claire Trevor once again. Most of your Western characters. The Western generally takes place after the Civil War. Just about every plot. Um, but all those characters were so affected by the war. Uh, old animosities and um, their own personal demons and stuff like that were affected by the Civil War. So, uh, and also after the Civil War was the, was the greatest uh, expansion of Manifest Destiny after that. Um, uh, because first, certainly for Southerners, the South had been devastated. Great Depression happened right afterwards in the 1870s. A huge depression happened. And so it forced people, but poor people, the only thing they could get was land. And they pushed west to get it. So many, many movies. Um, you know, one of my favorites, um, and I know it's, uh, maybe somebody else might probably disagree with me here, but uh, Sam Peckinpah made a marvelous movie prior to The Wild Bunch. And it was called Major Dundee. Now, most yeah. critics think that this movie is flawed. It's a, but it showed you the potential of the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But it also dealt with Union and Confederate prisoners during the Civil War down in New Mexico having to deal with an Apache raid where many children are captured and taken south to New Mexico by the Apaches. And you have Charlton Heston as Major Amos Dundee, Richard Harris as the cavalier southern Irish potato farmer, really, but he think he... he um, he thinks that he's very much a, a, some cavalier past. The tensions between the two sides are so wonderfully done mm -hmm. in this movie. Mm -hmm. All the greats, Ben Johnson, Slim Pickens. Uh, Warren Oates. Warren Oates, yeah. all the Peck and Paw and a lot of the old John Ford company yeah. are in it. Um, but it's, it truly is, and there's a director's cut out of it that is much better. Mm -hmm. It was slaughtered when it was originally um, released, but I remember Sla seeing it on... Uh, ABC uh, movie, uh, Saturday Night at the Movies. That's and it had uh, Mitch Miller's theme song at the yep. beginning. Let's go join the major and da -da, set, set da -da, the wrong da -da, tone da -da. and Peck and Paw sort yeah. of disowned it, but it has been restored. We've and, gone to all uh, the restorations. Mike, Mike Schlesinger here, who was at uh, Sony at the time, uh, working with Grover Crisp, they did restore the film mm -hmm. and uh, rescored it. And it's, it's like watching a different movie. It's wonderful. Both have their strong points, yeah. but the the restoration, the director's cut is It's is one of terrific. the better Civil War Westerns, yeah. though, I think. Well, um, uh, you know, John well, Ford, another great director, was a, a, a big Civil War buff. Well, yes, because in, when he had, it was in his cups, he would always tell about his various ancestors that fought in the war, and there's no real proof that any one of them ever did. <laughs> but that's being Irish, isn't it? And that's um, being John Ford. <laughs> that's being John Ford and Irish. Actually, he had an Uncle Mike, and he said at any given time, he said he was on one side, or he was on the other, and possibly with Ford's history, um, he probably was on both sides at one time or another. <laughs> well, he also claims he was in. He was a uh, stunt rider as one of the uh, Klansmen in Birth of a Nation. In fact, you can see him, or yeah. you can see Stills, and, and they've identified this Klansman in the Birth of a Nation in 1915 as John Ford. Young John Ford. Because he wore his glasses, and he couldn't see through the slits in the <laughs> so he put his glasses and so over he's the riding, slits? and he's holding it up like this, <laughs> and that's John Ford. <laughs> when the legend, when the legend yeah. becomes fact, yeah. print the legend. Um, but anyway, he made a lot of his films, his early films mm -hmm. with uh, Will Rogers. Oh, sure. All had the reverberations of this tragedy. And, they, and, and he was one of those most guilty of sort of romanticizing the lost cause and those veterans of the lost There's cause. There's a wonderful scene in Horse Soldiers where you've got the Southern doctor, which is uh, William Holden, and John Wayne, and, and they're, they're working together, but there's a boys' military school, yeah. and this is based on a true incident. The boys' military school, they are so anxious, they're gonna go fight these Yankees. The South is so depleted of manpower, of, of men of fighting age, that uh, this, this uh, colonel, comes to the old headmaster and he says, this is desperate times and, and we need your men. And he said, but my oldest boy is 14. 
Well, this is based on an actual incident that happened in New Battle of Newmarket with the young, um, Phil, if I got this right, I think it was the young VMI, wasn't it? The VMI students, which we did film in, long, in uh, Gods and Generals, we shot at VMI because Stonewall Jackson was a professor there prior to the war. And so we actually got to use it. And like uh, you said about using the streets of Charleston, um, uh, we, uh, we put dirt down, they took a few air conditioning units off the, off the windows, and it was li like it was 150 years ago. 110 and, degrees. Yeah, 110 <laughs> degrees. But anyway, it was based on the fact that these young boys actually damn near succeeded. They drove the Union forces from the field, and they were some as young as, uh, you know, six, uh, eight, you know, eight, nine, ten years old to up in their teens. Uh, but in this movie, he said, my oldest is 14 or 17, something like that. Ready? Fire! Fire! Ford used that marvelously. It's a mm, great sequence in The Horse Soldiers. He dr they drive off with all their, they're screaming these high-pitched rebel yells, <laughs> their little kid voices yelling, <laughs> screaming across. Well, they're marching out of the town in formation and the pipes and the, and the drums are going and uh, this mom, her mother runs out and grabs one of the little drummer boys out and he says, if I've got him, he's all I've got. You've taken my, my husband and my two older boys, I'm not gonna let him go. And she drags him out of line, he's kicking and screaming, screaming at the top of his lungs and they march out of town, the whole unit and, uh, and out, out the window, the drum comes out the window and the kid climbs down from his bedroom <laughs> and takes off, little Johnny takes off to join them. It's, a, it's comical, but it's sad and it's horrific at the same time. I highly recommend, anytime you can uh, watch the Horse Soldiers, John, John Wayne movie, it's, it's the one of the best sequences in the movie. It, it certainly is. Yeah. And one more thing before you go mm -hmm. is uh, I know... Before I go. Was that easy? Was that, was that smooth? I, try, I, I, I tried to be as smooth as I could. You know, Am I this. talking too much? <laughs> Newmarket is where we had dinner. That one time when we got lost in the woods, it was at Newmarket, the place you were talking you're about, the BMI. But you're not supposed to talk about that, no? I know a lot okay. of you may not remember, but that was Alex Hyde White. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Bo Hopkins for a minute oh, well, there. <laughs> well, so bef anyway, yeah. before you go. Before I, uh, I got a little long-winded there? Is, no, no, no. It's, uh, I, you know, we've just had the 60th anniversary of Gunsmoke. Mm -hmm. And Jim Arness was a mentor to you. Yes. And have you got a, a funny Arnest story to leave with us? A funny Arnest story. Uh, Jim was a prankster. He was a serious actor, though, when he got down to business. Uh, you got the day's work done. I think Lee DeBru can talk about that. He's done Gunsmoke. But he was a prankster. He had a great sense of humor, and he loved to play jokes on you. All I can really think of that, that when we had on the McCann's and how the West was won, uh, we had dinner scenes sometimes, and uh, Jim, on your close-up, would eat all the food off of your plate. <laughs> <laughs> he would, you, he'd be doing, cut, you know, be all, everything was on you, and you're talking to, we had six different members of the family, and big Jim there, and he would uh, reach right across and, ooh, yeah. Now, what if I had to, that was my last bite of apple pie, and I have to match what I did in the master by eating a piece of pie? He just ate it. So he'd like to play with you on things like that. But um, no, Jim Arness was everybody's hero, and I'm glad they're celebrating the 60th anniversary. <laughs> We're back. What's that hat? Anyway, this cap is from, this was oftentimes when you're making a feature film, you get a crew jacket a cast and crew jacket or something like that. We did get a number of things, but I've saved this all these years. Uh, this is the Gods and Generals uh, uh, cap, crew cap. All the crew wore it, and the cast got it as well. Now, and why didn't you get a jacket like Punch did? <laughs> I'm not quite a, a thief like Punch oh. did. So, um, but I'm envious that he got his jacket. I actually do have a big <laughs> overcoat. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But, um, yeah, this is special to me. Um, it actually shows the, the real Confederate States flag, which is so controversial today, you know, in, in, our, in our culture today, but the, uh, the flag that is under so much controversy is the Confederate battle flag. This is the flag of the Confederacy. So if you get that on close-up. 
Thank you. A little bit of history there. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Bruce. My dad was an actor and my mother was a stage manager, so I always get along with wardrobe and props. That means he gets away with them, not get along. <laughs> Ironclads, though. Mm. Uh, Ironclads was a movie about the first maritime a battle with a submarine. Alex was the lead. It was a, a TNT premiere movie. Delbert Mann, Academy Award winning director of Marty, directed it. Virginia Madsen was your love affair. Yeah. She, well, Marty Cove came to visit her, so that slowed us down for a couple of days. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was uh, Delbert Mann, who was a wonderful director. Norman Rosemont was a producer of big film. And this was Ted Turner's sort of... Um, statement in a way. He was very creative, very bold risk taker. And unlike when talking about um, Gone with the Wind and Selznick, for instance, the casting and the effort and the, uh, the sort of the strength of the uh, of, of a producer's strength creates such a wonderful film. Turner gave the impression of being the other way. He just had a romantic, slightly maybe naive idea that he could make this big film, but he was smart enough to hire Rosemont and Delbert Mann. And uh, Virginia, I think, had done something quite good the year before. And so, you know, to be hired, Reed Diamond, who became a really good actor, it was his first job out of um, Juilliard, playing the, uh, the, the northern love interest. But in the same sort of way, they try to weave these romantic elements. And, you, you know, it's very difficult to take such a... Uh, such an era of our lives. We all think we have a relationship with the Civil War, I think. You know? What was the story of Ironclads? Well, it was the story of the uh, CSS uh, Virginia that became the Merrimack when I think it was probably Richmond Harbor changed hands mm -hmm. from north to south. And the ship that was the Union Virginia became the CSS Merrimack, and they boarded it up, put these iron siding on it so that it could counter what the monitor was doing for the, uh, for the north. It, the, uh, the monitor had a turret. The turret was above. And so we were a full-on battleship that uh, was heavy as heck because of the, uh, of the iron sighting. And the special effects, the miniatures were terrific. Yeah, How well, large yeah. were those? Well, that's the thing. I mean, Turner said, am I going to be able to have those miniatures for my desk? <laughs> and they said, sir, you better get a bigger desk because they were 25, uh, 35 feet long. <laughs> So he said, that's okay, and he ended up putting him in the uh, lobby of the CNN Plaza. <laughs> and he was in it, and his daughter uh, was an intern um, on, the, on the film. And then we saw him a few years later at one of your Golden Boot Awards. Oh, when yes, uh, Turner Ted was there. came uh, yeah. when we honored uh, yeah. uh, Jane Fonda. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I remember the screening we had at the DGA was uh, Jane uh, and um, Turner was there. You know, it was a big film. It was... A, it was they hadn't quite cracked the code. I remember North and South when I was just starting out as a client of William Morris. I said to my agent, you know, this is what I want. I wanted to go up on this. I had just started. Uh, and they, they said, well, why do you want to do Civil War? And I always had it in my heart. So when Ironclads came through, I guess Pretty Woman had come out the year before. Mm -hmm. And so I had the mm -hmm. shot to, yes. to, to play a leading role like that. Where was it filmed? Right on the Richmond, uh, on, the, on, the, on the river, on the James River. And, and this is, of course, before the digital age, were uh, the extras, were they reenactors yeah. that were there? Yeah, and, you know, this was uh, naval warfare, so it was about the size. The set was, the interior of the, of the Merrimack was like the sort of the width of this building, really, and it was filled with, uh, with uniform-clad reenactors who bring their own gear, and uh, they did a wonderful job of, of really recreating the minutia of... Uh, that went into firing these broadsides. Yeah, it was a very interesting time. 